So, what's up folks, this is Alex from Germany, Berlin, introducing you for the new tutorial series for the QSU Real Instrument Scratching and out of the entire course content, this is the first tutorial presenting the part Scratch Techniques. My aim is to show you some really a simple methodology through which you can generate some new scratch techniques by a general pattern and the first sample to analyze is the so-called prism scratch, a really nice combo invented by our school director TJ Kubert. So and I wish you a very Christmas. <laughs> Alrighty, right. At first, a little explanation of the prism scratch of the original pattern. Um, it's done by a combination of different famous techniques. On the one hand, on the crossfader logic and on the record motion. On the record motion, in fact, it involves the one forward, two backward tear, plus the two forward, one backward tear in direct succession. That means directly following one and another. So then we incorporate on the crossfader the two click uh, two click clicker performance it means closing tapping opening and we play it twice over the record motion pattern um, we produce or it's clear that we produce six sounds that means one two three and then four five six so and now a little uh, demo uh, I play over a beat from Lone Wolf from the UK, uh, famous beat maker uh, with the saxophone tone, the prism scratch performance, and enjoy. <laughs> So, some basics at a glance. To be able to explain the transformation of given scratch techniques, I categorize them into different types. First refers to deformation by means of changing, changing the crossfader performance. The second refers to changing of the record motion and last but not least to some music theoretical principles. This forms of classification helps us to build up a clear structure which you can apply into other techniques and playing styles. Before we do that, let's consider a very important fact which has an enormous importance for the musical output of a scratch technique. I mean here the positioning of the pattern inside a measure. So positioning. Um, the most common positioning of a scratch techniques is on the one beat. That means when we count one and two and three and four and one. <coughs> yes, I think this is clear. And we can check this little demo right here. Okay, this is it. Now let's check some other variations of positioning the scratch technique. Um, for example, we obtain a different acoustical impression when we start scratching a 1 8 time value before the 1 8, as uh, 1 beat, sorry. To catch this point, we count as follows 1 and 2 and 3 and 4. <coughs> After the 4, that means exactly at the four end. Okay, once again, one and two and three and four and <coughs> the four end. So here is another demo. <coughs> so another way of scratching is when you start scratching a 1-8 time value after the 1 beat. In this case, you must start scratching on the 1N. Uh, now you must count 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1N. 
on the one end. Yeah, here is another demo. Now we can go a little bit more in detail and try start scratching a 116 before or after the one beat. My advice, these techniques are hard to play, especially if you play the pattern in a continuative way several times one after another and with a focus on the traditional emphasis of the, emphasis of the playing techniques. Due to the fact that one bar consists of 16, 116 notes, or rather possible start positionings for scratching, you get an impression of the various possible ways of playing styles. <laughs> 